What's good, everybody? So let's make it happen. Right now, we had Mel Gibson gives Kamala Harris a scathing assessment. Uh, she's got the IQ of a fence post. <laughs> That's not nice, but he, he was upset at that time. He submitted it during the time when she was saying a lot of things about Trump. And she was bashing him, his character. She was even bashing things about his intelligence. And this was basically him replying to her. Well, hey, you got the IQ of a fence post. If he was reading, like, why is it so uh, angry? It's because of what she was saying at that time. Uh, now, let's get into it. All right. We start here at Psalms 50, chapter 50, and we're starting at the 16th. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou do, to do to declare my statutes? O oh, that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth right there. Remember what comes out your mouth uh, defiles you. It's not what you eat. So basically your statue should be known coming out of his mouth. You should be enacting the things God tells you. If you're not, you're going to go to hellfire. Okay. He's going to send you off. He can't take anybody half cooked. You know, them half cooked people, same thing as a woman. Like when you're dealing with a man, maybe, you know, a lot of women say they feel like they got to make a man, like they got to get him smart. Got to tell him how to get educated, show him, direct him everything. When the man's supposed to be the doing the directing and God directs the man's path. Like that's what, we're referring to at that type so you are you who you are and god created you and if you're not doing the things god says you're a failure okay that's what it, that is to understand point blank period and it's by the statutes so if you're doing things that you know are directly against what god says you're going against the word all right let's go thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth seeing thou hatest instruction right there they hate instruction. They don't like to get told what to do. That is crazy to me because growing up, that shows that they didn't listen to their parents. So therefore, you weren't a good student. You weren't a good child. So you growing up shows how you failed to be a, a child. So you failed being a kid. So making it to adulthood, that was grace and mercy because you failed to do what your parents told you as a kid. So therefore, you deserve to go to hell by scripture. OK, let's move. We're going through it. Okay. Let's see. Instruction and cast this my words behind thee. Right there. They cast the word of God behind them. The Bible means nothing to them. Again, it's like they said, oh, yeah, it's just a book. To them, it's just a book. To us, when we know history and we know how it fits in, we know that it is the word of God, that it is what runs this whole world. We know that. Some people know and they go against it because they don't like it. It's like, I don't like what it says, but it doesn't matter. You are going to go to hell. When you die and see, the thing is, they keep breathing with grace and mercy. Like, yo, I'm trying to think of that thing. Um, I'll mention it briefly. If you guys can think of it, mention it below. You know that thing where a person keeps getting the opportunity to keep doing something like like sort of like school. You know how you mess up in normal school. You go to that side class to do your schoolwork and to get better. It's just like that. It's that God put like a Braxis. We ours, we call it a Braxis. So. Basically, you go to a Braxis and that's where you go, but you go there and you never learn. So you're there to learn, but you still decide not to learn. So therefore, God can't use you. So he puts you in a settlement place like he puts you in your life where you're at, where he knows you're going to find the word of God. But your choice decides to people look at it, know they should read and say, I don't want to. I don't want to. They keep saying, I don't want to until the day they die. And God's like right before them, like, hey. And they're like, hey, and he's like, he's like, wait, and now this is for the ones that he still accepts, but they didn't really believe in the word, but he still sees them. Remember the ones that are super wicked. He doesn't even see them. They just appear in hell getting beat, tortured. We're getting back there. I'm starting to see it. Let's go. Okay. The devil's a liar. Our rebuking, like little things he tries. Burn. Take my covenant in thy mouth. Being thou hate this instruction and cast this my words behind thee when thou sawest a thief then thou content con, content my words behind thee right there yo they seen the thief coming now who's the thief what did satan come to do steal kill and destroy the first thing steal so he's a thief up top He's nothing, nothing wholesome, nothing honorable. Understand, these are qualities not honorable to God, okay? It's a God. It don't matter to man, to God, the one who decides if you die tonight, 
Yo, why do people not get when I'm saying this? The same one who you close your eyes smiling tonight might say, die tonight. You might close your eyes, go to sleep, and never wake up. That God. People are so confused. Like, it's weird. These dudes be weird to me. You don't know that God? The one who can decide, oh, you close your eyes, die. One, in their sleep. They, they saw today, full day. Nothing wrong with them. But when they close their eyes, just because God says die, and they die in their sleep, got to get carted out by the coroner. That's why you got to praise God while you have breath. Because if you if you perish, it's too late. Too late. You live your life for naught. All right, come on. Behind thee, when thou consentedest with them and hadest and hadest been partaker with adulterers right there. The reason they're so hostile towards the person is because they know they know something about them. They took part in something with them. They were involved in something. Now they're looking at them like, man, this person knows too much about me. If something happens, something's going to come out right there. God's telling you, you were content doing it, but now you're not content with the after effect. Right there, he tells you that your choices, they right there, he's backing me. One choice can change the rest of your life. One choice that you make against God. He could come down, change your whole life just because you went against God by scripture. Let's go. Okay, it says, been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Right there. That's their character. They're evil. They're wicked. They defile. They speak nothing but guile. They know no good. That God's like, you know no good. What's that song? You know no good. Right there, yo. They know no good. They don't know it. Even if it was in front of them, they don't know no good. They do, yo, it, yo, Proverbs, yo, they're the same dudes who turn good to bad and bad to good. They'll do something stupid that's bad and say it's good or do something good and say it's bad. That's what God's talking about right there. That type of behavior gets you sent to hell fast. Actually, it reserves you a spot in hell. That's why you got to seek God while you have breath. It reserves your spot in hell. Watch. He's about to back me. Get this. Mouth to evil and thy to have from the deceit right there deceit thou let's see sittest sittest and speakest against thy brother thou slanderest thine own brother's son right there when you're yo just because you are in a better position you're better off you're not the person making mistakes if you know good you're supposed to tell the person good so if i know a better way to do something i'm not going to sit and watch the person fail and just laugh no i'm going to tell them the best way so that they can do it better and have the same outcome i would want if i were doing it right there you can't trick god right there because this person here you see it they're dealing with the other person what they're doing is saying look god i'm doing this because of that person you can't trick god because this person has not done anything to deserve what you're doing to them but you choose to because watch here because we're talking about evil watch get this here's where the bible gets real okay this wouldn't get scary time for a lot of people speak it's against thy brother thou slanders thine own brother son these these things has thine thou done and i kept silence right there i did not say hold your peace right so you hold your peace and you're continuing to hold your peace but they don't know no good right so they don't stop they don't know when to stop doing bad because they don't know god watch this this is when they die you'll watch this time to die get this this is where it gets real this is why i tell you you got to read every verse all right and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own brother, son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. God kept silence too. He didn't punish them for it. And that's why they're laughing at God, like, look, I'm doing what I want. But he just chose not to punish you. He could he could have, but he didn't. But they take it as a win for them. God didn't do nothing, so they think they beat God. Watch this. Because this is where they get rock. This puts them in their place. In their place, hell, fire. Let's go. Let's get it. Watch. I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one to thyself, but I will reprove thee right there. What did I say? We got to reprove wicked acts, wicked things, wicked thoughts, wicked decisions. All wickedness you must reprove or else God's going to look at your eyes when you die and say, why didn't you do what I told you? Therefore, you go to hell. Watch. This, all right, get this. 
right. I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee right there. This person, okay, here we go. Now the person's coming to himself because they're saying, hey, I was like you before, so I'm going to reprove it right there. Parents, if you've been through something, you're going to tell your kid how to get through it, right? If you witness and experience something, you're going to tell your kid how to survive it, right? Same thing. God expects you to do to others around you. If you know that something's not going to work or there's a better way to do something or that danger is ahead, you're expected to speak up. Those who stay silent about that, remember, this person stays silent. But there's telling the person I stayed silent until now. Now it's time for me to speak, which means that I stayed silent until it was danger for you. So they're speaking because danger is ahead. OK, you're supposed to be your brother's keeper. Are you your brother's keeper or not? Let's go. All right, let's go. And set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver whoso what offer of praise glorify of me and to him that order of his conversation i are uh, all right will i shoot the salvation of god right there when you humble yourself you seek god you'll find him you got to humble your spirit before god what you going to do when you die? You're going to look God in the eyes and say, move out the way. I'm walking into heaven. You're not going to say nothing because understand through the councils, you can't even speak unless he allows you to. Because remember, you got to give your testimony before the angels of God. See, that's what people aren't getting. Yes, you're in front of God, but you're not going to disrespect God when the angel of God is waiting for you to speak. And depending because that's who you speak to first. You're not even able to go and talk to God. You got to speak to the angel of God. If you're wicked, the angel of God is going to look at you and slaughter you. The angel of God is going to look you dead in your eyes and slaughter you. You think that, yo, they think they're going to see God and say whatever they want. They won't even get the chance to see God because you're so wicked. God doesn't want nothing to do with you when you die. So you go straight to hell. You appear in hellfire getting ravaged by demons. Every demon that's down there is going to be on you, guys. I know you're thinking like there's so many people. There, There's enough demons to go around. There's enough devils to be multiplicity of devils on each and every one of Yo, there could be a billion of you in hell. There's at least two or three devils for every one of you by scripture. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't understand. You're headed to pure torture. You don't, you don't, you got to read. This is why I give you the readings, guys. Make sure you read. So because this you got to get, get this. Now we're in the Psalms 51. Through the chief musician, a Psalm of David. When Nathan, the prophet came unto him after he had gone unto Bathsheba, have, have mercy upon me, O God, according to the loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy transactions. Right there, guys. Guys, your life is a transaction in the spiritual realm. Do you get that? You breathing is a transaction. Your life, we're transactions to God, okay? To God and to angels, we're a transaction. God's like, hey, Go, go check out number 552. Like, we literally, guys, because you're not known in heaven because you're not feared yet. You haven't done anything. You're a blessed status. But what have you done, done to show yourself approved to God? Guys, there's so many of us. God is just looking at us like, who's going to show me they're worthy? Okay? You got to prove that by scripture. Okay, get that. This is what 51 is talking about. Now, get the wording of this. It's very serious. A Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba, have mercy, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of the transactions, woe, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for i acknowledge my trend right there i acknowledge my transgressions 
and my sin is ever before me. Right there, you got to acknowledge your sin. Guys, ever since again, I had trouble acknowledging my sin because I was I was looking at what I felt God did wrong in my life. See, because I'm like, yo, God, then why'd you take that person out of my life? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Because, you know, when you grow up in a place, disenfranchised place, you lose a lot of people, okay? I lost people and I'm like, God, why are you allowing this? Like, get it. Do you get that? That I'm looking at life and I'm looking around me at people, but God's looking at transactions, okay? There's transactions going on, life, death, hurt, need healing. Then he's like, who's praying? Us praying is us in putting a transaction as well. If there's a transaction, there's an exchange. So there needs to be an exchange of some sort between us and God. Praise from us, blessings from God, right there. Praise from us, blessings from God. Prayer from us, adherence from God. Us obeying, God blessing, right there. That's how this world works. Transactions. And people, until they realize that, you'll get this. Let me say that. In the same tense, let's talk about past scriptures we read. Does it not make sense why the devil can't do a transaction? How can he do a transaction with you if he has no power? So he literally has, is like us under God. He got to go to God too. So how can he do a transaction if he got to go to God too? We got to go to God too, right there. Satan's equal with us, right there. Why are you worshiping a being you're equal to? He's not greater than you. The devil's equal, if not lesser, because he got to go to God too. He got to talk to God too, because he's cursing you to God, trying to do a righteous thing. Like, look at him sin, God, look at him sin. And that sends us to hell. The devil's literally trying to get you sent to hell. So why is there a transaction you can make with him when he has no power? But he goes to God bashing you by name we're getting there. By name he's trying to get you sent to hell. He doesn't like us. He doesn't like you. You could pray to the devil day and night. He still hates you. He doesn't like you. And he wants you to go to hell. Okay? I'm tired of these dudes. They don't read. I read the book of Thelema. That's why I'd be ready to off these dudes. I read the book of Thelema. All that. That's why I'm saying, y'all better mind your manners. I read y'all stupid book all the way. Come on, dog. A long time ago was in your book, and I know it's false. So here's what I'm going to say. Mind your manners. I'll curse you dudes dead. Mind your manners. You dudes don't understand. I'm holding back. I go to God and pray. I got to go to God too. I got to go to him and say, can this person die yet? I got to go to God and ask before I curse somebody. Same way. God's not smart. Y'all not smart at all. I got to go to God before I, I make one of y'all perish. I got to ask God. And the funny thing is some of you suckers, he keeps saying no. And that's why y'all lie. Because God said no. <laughs> but they want to bash God. But God said no. Let them live. Okay. You deserve your life. Sure. <laughs> funny. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee, the only. What? Against thee, the only? God gets with you wicked men. All you wicked dudes bashing God, keep going. One of those days, you're not going to wake up right there. One of the days, you're dead. Because he's not listening to you. You're not important. But see, funny thing is, every time these guys curse God, I did a, a call out to God because I know God's in eternity. He's not paying attention to them. He's paying attention to everyone. He's focused. You're not that important. But you want to know why I called out to God after they did it? Because what he does, he hears his children. So what he's going to do, it could be a year from now. He's going to hear me say what I say, go back and look at what they said, and he's going to kill them off the rip. That's why I laugh at these dummies because when they do that, I do a shout out to God, an utterance to God, because he's going to look at that time of day and look at them, look at their life and wonder, should he kill them off of that one moment? Because he's busy. Think of a, a mighty God looking at billions of people. He's not worried about one stupid dummy cursing his name. You're not that important. So what he does, he goes to his, his believers. What did it say in Psalms? He, <laughs> yo, come on. Psalm 70, 71, was it? 72? That we read for uh, Shorties earlier, a few months ago. 
when it was talking about that he goes back, he looks at it as his believers, honest and truth. He hears honest and truth. That's why I do a, they curse God, I shout out to God and I laugh because he's going to laugh because next thing he's going to do, he, it could be two months later and he, he goes back, says, oh, you curse me because he doesn't care. They're not that important. He says, and he's in their faith. He's like, oh, did you curse me? And they're like, oh, no, that was months ago. He's like, oh, I re oh, months ago, die. And it'll be, that's when a dude dies in their sleep. That's when they die randomly because God went back and checked and he saw they cursed them. And they're months later, not cursing them at all, not one, wondering why things are going bad. They never, ever were remorseful for their cursing of God. And he finally looked and heard you, little man. Now it's time to die. That's why I laugh at these dudes. They think death is supposed to come immediate. No. How many times did you do it? How many times did I shout out to him? That's how many times you have a chance to die. You could have cursed God 10 times that month. You got 10 times more to die. You're 10 times more than likely to die next month. That's how light, yo, by scripture, you're 10 times more likely to die next month. They don't get it. God is almighty. You're not that important. Yo, let's go. That's why I be laughing. I really laugh at these dudes straight, straight up. They be dying left and right. I just be laughing. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Because it's before you. Is it before God yet? It's before you. Is it before God yet? He saw it. But is it before his death to look at? And yo, reprimand. Yo, they don't read. Watch this. Watch. It's about glorify me and them that order of his conversation. All right, will I shoot the salvation of God? Okay. Now, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone to Bathsheba, we the mercy, mercy upon me, O God, according to my loving kindness, according to the multitude of the transgressions, trans transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee, the only justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and we were born in sin and in sin did my mother conceive me facts behold thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom right there purge me with hyssop and i shall <laughs> what i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow right there make me to hear joy and gladness there that broken may rejoice right there this is why psalms are so important right there you just renewed your spirit you know how dudes regenerate when they're fighting in battles and anime that's your regeneration i just regenerate myself reading that that's simple whiter than snow make me to hear joy and gladness that broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins renew a right spirit within me change my spirit god help it get better right there cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit right there like i said this renews your spirit and your energy so right there like in dragon ball z when they come back and they're fighting harder right there that's what that does for you it gives you more strength to fight all right now let me say for the reading here I will this reading okay for, so for this reading you guys gotta go check out jeremiah i'm gonna give you the readings a little bit earlier i'm gonna get to jeremiah but you gotta read jeremiah chapter 4 verse 1 through 31 okay now the reading i have for you i'm gonna do the reading after i read it to you then but that's gonna be the reading that you gotta have it's jeremiah chapter 4 verse 1 to 31 and when we get there i'm gonna read 26 for you okay let's ride let I get to these other ones real quick. I just split it up. I sometimes I'll be writing so much I gotta split it up. It's just too much to put on, put on. Like it'd be going over three, four pages. I'll be like, be crazy. All right, man. All right. Now we're at Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. Okay. And the Amorites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself. 
exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert right there. Why there's buildings and stuff in Egypt right there it tells you why there's buildings and things in the desert. People say who was building out here? Just found out. Proving the Bible true, again, in Egypt. We're talking about Egypt. Understand, there's different pyramids and stuff in the desert. They were building in the desert. Says it right here. How they were carrying the stones. Who, uh, but I can tell you they did it, all right? They were doing it. Maybe they're stronger. Here's the thing. You got to understand. We're a lot weaker than our ancestors. And I proved it when I told you. For, for fun, they used to see who could chop a whole tree down in one chop. Who could swing an axe once and knock a whole tree down? I don't know no one one man living today that could do that. Swing an axe, knock a tree down in one swing, one swing, not multiple swings, one swing. You were the strongest if you did it. They so multiple people were doing it. They would swing an axe, knock a whole tree down in one swing. Come on, there's very few men that can even think to try it. Come on, they got to do more than one swing. How strong you got to be to do that? Come on, it's by scripture now. Now we're talking the word of God. Stop it. Cut it out. One swing, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Ziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert and dig many wells, for he had much cattle both in the low country and in Carmel. For he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that went out to war by bands according to the number of their account by the hand of Jalil, the scribe and Messiah, the ruler under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains, the whole number of the fathers of mighty men of Valor were 2,600 and under their hand was an army, 307,500 that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them th throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented right there. They had engines. So yes, they were they had transportation. He made engines. What would he make engines for if they didn't have transportation? So back then, yes, they had vehicles of some sort that used engines and they traveled in. Facts in the Bible right here. Okay. That's how they were getting around. Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men. Remember, God say be cunning like Satan, like a snake, but be wise. Be cunning, but wise. Okay, cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad for he, he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up. To his destruction right there. When he got stronger himself, he put his pride up right there. God gave him the faculties. Huge army, just go with your army, you'll be good. He said, I want to be strong. I, right there, pride takes you away from God. He said, I, and he thought I was greater than all, <laughs> okay? And it lifted up him up to destruction right there. If you lift yourself up, instead of lifting the name of God up, you're going to get destroyed. If you lift up your name over God, you get destroyed by scripture. All right. For he transgressed against the Lord, his God, and went to the temple of the Lord to burn incense right there. When you're burning incense in God's temple. Why? Why are you burning incense in God's temple? What's the reason? You don't need that. He said, no. Burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah, the priest, went in after him and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they with, I'm not going, I'm not talking about, withstood Uzziah. They're, man, I'm not, I glorify not myself, I glorify God, okay? I glorify not myself, God only, okay? Right there. Burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah, the priest, went in after him. And with him, four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah. 
they withstood him to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests of the sons of Aaron that are consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God right there. He wasn't worthy to burn the incense right there. He wasn't worthy to burn the incense in the temple. This man just came from slaughtering tons of men with his guys. He didn't give no penance to God. What, yo, what does Saul and them do that we read from Genesis all the way up? They give glory to God before they did any type of war. That's what you got to do. So you don't just go and burn incense. First off, you're burning incense when you're not fit to do it. You, you're not fit to do it. Who are you, Uzziah? Right there, he was wicked. He wasn't set to do it because he had sin on him. All right. You guys got to, again, Second Chronicles chapter 27, 1 to 9. And it's short, 1 to 9. Second Chronicles chapter 27, 1 to 9. And it gives you an intro to Jotham because we're going to enter Jotham a little bit. All right, come on. Time for the crux. Jeremiah chapter 3. Starting at the fifth. Will he reserve this anger forever? We were just talking about his anger. I can't make this up. We were just talking about his anger. Now it's asking, will we reserve it? Will we reserve it, his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Jalil. No, I think this is Jaseel, the king. Has thou seen that which backsliding Israel that has done right there at this time? Israel backslid, okay? Remember, these guys just in the past, before this moment, they denied God. They backslid. So they that's a long time for them to be doing sin. So other gods made their way into Israel and were different things, different stuff, doing the Buddhas, the Muhammads, the, the, the all type of Allah stuff that made their way into Israel right there. Th this was the problem. Backsliding was happening in Israel. Why? Because of the sin that was upon them from that time of the wicked dudes and them denying God. Therefore, the devil made his way into there. That's how other religions made it over to Europe in the areas of Asia. It was when they backslid in Israel because Israel was without God. So other false religions got created. Other uh, crafty people that were using wisdom of the devil started making up different religions that weren't true. They made them from their imagination. <laughs> we're getting to it. Wicked devices right there. Yo, what? That's that right there. That's what it was. Them backsliding, the relig the religious things that th that came in were wicked devices used for them to manipulate the population to follow what they say, do what they say. Same way as we see some things over uh, China. Hey, what's up now? What you got going on over there? Come on now, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, okay? I don't want to have to warn you more seriously do it willingly, okay? Jesus Christ, okay? I warned you now. Israel, that that has done, she is going up upon every high mountain and under every green tree. And there have played the harlot right there. That's Satan. I just, yo, I was about to say, that's Satan. Because, listen, they're under every green tree, under every, Satan tries to be in everything, be under everybody, everybody's business. That's what he does. He's nosy. He does everything to try and see how he gets an advantage to make you die, okay? It's always an advantage to make you perish. That's all it's about, taking out human life, okay? Backsliding Israel have done. She is going up upon every high mountain and upon and under every green tree. And there have played the harlot. And I said after she had done all these things, turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw them right there. Israel influenced others, like I said, to do wickedness, take on wicked religious belief. Right there, back me. Because Judah started swaying after Israel. Judah saw Israel, started following Israel. Israel was the big brother, leading everybody. 
right there, yo. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Because Judah was no better, but it followed in the footsteps. And I saw then for all the causes whereby lacking Israel committed adultery. I had further away and given her a bill of divorce right there. When God gave the bill of divorce, other religions came in, other stuff. He backed off. He said, look, you guys aren't listening. You got to figure it out yourself. I'm, I, I gave my life for this. God's like, I gave my life. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw then for all the causes whereby lacking Israel committed adultery. I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightest, through the light, lightest of her, the lightness of her whoredom right there. Took whoredom lightly, took it lightly, took the word of God for nothing right there. All of you taking the word of God for nothing, saying that you're going to chase something else. When you leave this earth, you're going to regret it. Everything about it, you're going to regret it because you didn't see God. You had to see God and find him. He's right there. All right, let's go. Lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones right there with stones mocking God, the rock using stones instead of the rock. What? And with stocks right there. We're talking about the stock market, right? Yo, we're play with stocks. We're play all around. We're talking about guns, talking about weapons, stock. You know the stock when you reload the stock? That's talking about weapons. Yo, we're, that's the problem now. Gangsters in the street. Yo, God's the real savage. He called it out. Stocks. Then, yo, when dudes, when the stock market crashed, these dudes be committing suicide. What? God's the real savage. Yo, a triple piece. He did, he did a, yo. He just did a trifecta. What? Stock? Stock money? Stock weapons? Stock? What? God's the real savage. The market. Yo, let's go. That was a knockout. God's the real savage. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister, Judah, hath not turned unto me. And that that's us. Because the, whoa, line of Judah, that's us. We haven't turned to God. What? That's us too. It's not just them, it's us. What? And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned to me with her whole heart. But feignedly saith the Lord and the treacherous Judah, go and proclaim the words toward the north and south. Oh, the north and say, return the backsliding Israel. Saith the Lord and I will not Cause thine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers. What we did, strangers, under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. O backsliding children, Hold on. O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. One, Yo, what? And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, and it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In these days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the lord neither shall it come to mind neither shall they remember it neither shall they visit it neither shall that be done anymore right there jesus christ is here so all that other stuff it don't matter jesus christ is here what are you looking for jesus is before you he's right in front of your face you got to read jeremiah chapter 4 1 to 31 and i got 26 for you 
I beheld, lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger right there backing all the scripts we said he's going to destroy the wicked. He's coming back. He's going to bring tragedy to a lot of people. If you're wicked, you got to find God. You got free will to seek God, Jesus Christ. Find him. Seek him in honesty and truth. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, Mel Gibson. Passionate of Christ, two on the way. Let's go. Let's get it rocking, my Let's do this. Shout out to the greatest nation since United Nations. All rights reserved, nigga.